How complex do you think the markets are nowadays? Ever wanted to crack it open and make seamless money through it? Well, there might be a few things you would have to know before jumping into it. Welcome to Fix Your Finances, Build Financial Wealth. You have come to the right place to build your financial wealth and to get your mind filled with the right information. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for us to provide you with more valuable content. What we have for you on the table today is everything about market liquidity, inflation, and financial system, as described by Kathy Wood. We would be learning about monetary policies, fiscal policies, and some economic and market indicators to ascertain a few troubles that the markets might have to face at the moment. The impact of rising rates, Treasury Secretary's mindset on the crypto markets, especially Bitcoin, the liquid of the market, especially ETFs, and we'll have a comparison between inflation and deflation. We will also look deeply into the comments by Thomas Petterfee, Chairman of Interactive Brokers. Let us start with the monetary policies. After Federal Reserve's Chairman Jerome Powell made a testimony last month in front of Congress, it can be deciphered that the Federal Reserve is supportive as a result of which we see the M2 growing all the way up to mid-20s with a very rapid rate of growth. The monetary policy is very supportive and has certainly reaped out the benefits that we wanted it to reap. The chairman has also clarified the focus they have with this step being taken. The first one being full employment and the second one being inflation above 2%. Neither one among them has been achieved yet, but the policy that has been put is pretty supportive of the future events. The aim is to have the inflationary levels above 2% consistently, which yet hovers in between 1.5 and 2. So having a consistent 2% is another major task that has been put forth through this policy. This inflation is calculated year-over-year -year basis. All these events indicate that the Federal Reserves may probably not tighten up in the coming few days or weeks. However, this might be the case for markets themselves. A few other indicators of changes in the Federal Reserves in terms of tightening up of the monetary policy were also noticed. The prices of commodities have been skyrocketing, especially that of copper and that relative gold. Currently, the dollar is going down and housing prices are going up at a double-digit rate. A lot of action has been noticed in the cryptocurrency space with the new coin, named Dogecoin completely revolutionizing how people looked at cryptocurrencies in the past. As she spoke about fiscal policy, she thanked the budget reconciliation as we probably will be getting a package in the $1.7 trillion to $1.9 trillion ranges. The set amount does not include the $15 minimum wage that was originally in the bill. If this amount is also included in the set amount, the total amount will then shoot all the way up to $3 to $4 trillion infrastructure. During the Kennedy and Johnson presidencies, there was a very famous story of gun and butter. The theory is pretty optimistic in nature and goes on to say that we will have to pay for all of this that is being done today in any one shape or form. We will believe that the economy will grow its way out and that inflation will play a very substantial part in the solution. However, there are many other investors who are worried about the leverage in the system. Another huge amount of money, not a part of the initially spoken package, ranging all the way to $600 billion, was also introduced as a stimulus into the system. This was noticed in the personal income report. This meant that the disposable personal income came up around 11.5%. The spending was up by 2.4%. While both of these happened, the saving went back to 20.5%. It peaked at about 35% in the crisis that came down month by month. All these figures are monthly basis which means that the annual rates of these figures would be much higher than we could expect it to be. This was the part that gave her a shock as she went through the reports. She also expected the savings percentage to drop down from the double digits, however, it shot back up soon after that. On the basis of all of these facts and figures, she exclaims that the economy is on fire, even though we are not at full employment. The multipliers associated with each of them are also very high that yet again inclines a positive indication. The capital spending was noticed to be really strong by her and she says that it has been forced into action by the coronavirus. 
The reason being the shift of people onto the digital fields for almost all needs, taking innovations beyond the rate at which we would have been without the pandemic, or the rate at which the observers would have expected it to be. Housing and capital have a lot of impact in the economy. According to her, this meant that a dollar spent forces a lot more dollars to be spent in both these fields to bring back another virtuous cycle. Let us see how these factors have been affecting the market. As the market noticed that the economy is really strong, the higher valuation part of the equity markets saw an increase in the long rates that is the interest rates to touch the 1.6% on February 26, 2021 on a 10-year treasury bond yield. The 2-year and 5-year, usually called the belly of the curve, also saw the interest rates going up. They were held to be down for a long time because the Federal Reserve asserted that they will not be going anywhere. This has been changed recently. Historically, this change has been the beginning of the market leading the Federal Reserve. This also means that the strength that the markets have currently, they now can say that they do not require quantitative easing. Kathy thinks that this move could most certainly be on its way and reminds her of the late 2016 and early 2017 when quantitative easing was on its way out with the Federal Reserve going to raise the interest rates. This made the market very nervous because after President Trump won the election, the odds of a cyclical burst increased as he promised to cut taxes. The equity market pretty much had the same nervousness as they heard about the interest rates going up. After the election of President Trump, the stocks took off as a response to this idea of the economy developing ahead of time resulting into the value stocks taking off. The energy stocks are up by almost 27% while the financial stocks are up by 11%. These are good indications for the market and promising for the investors. Regarding cryptocurrency, Kathy points out, as it was held by the higher-ups, how speculative Bitcoin is and how the same is unsustainable in the market. They also claim that it helps elicit activity and encourages the same and so forth. Kathy says that she is not sure why she said this and believes that she does not understand the crypto space. Kathy was bold enough to clarify that this isn't what the higher up does in fact and also understands that she is responding to a movement in price that has been very rapid, somewhere around fivefold since the end of the third quarter, making it really extreme. She referred to a white paper on mining by Yassin Almandra, where there is a comparison between the energy used by Bitcoin compared to the total energy required to mine gold. The energy requirement for Bitcoin that is also considered to be digital gold is a fraction of how much it takes to mine gold through the conventional methods that we have been using for ages. Going a bit broader, the Bitcoin blockchain and also the other blockchain will bring in much more rapid settlement of trades and transactions. This means that this will bring down the energy consumption even more. As we all know about Dogecoin, that has already achieved this milestone of confirming transactions much faster than others. We can be speculative of the time and energy that we will be saving in future as we progress through the crypto space. The nominal growth of the economy must be around 4-5%. to That is the normalized rate needs to advance further. She says that we have never been able to get through these numbers and advance out further that is setting us back in the market. However, if the normalized growth rate was around 2-3%, to through the same analysis, she says that there should be serious valuation support, especially for companies that are able to grow very rapidly during the next few years. Another very interesting thing that Kathy mentioned was that she does not think people would believe what she said until the time is tested and proven. This means that there are possibilities for the 10-year treasury yield to move to the required 3% and then fail because of the notion that nominal growth in the economy is closer to the 2-3% range. The reason for this is that there are major deflationary forces evolving in the global economy. This result could turn shocking for many of us. We hope you liked this video and was fruitful enough for you to learn a lot. Do you think the analysis and the possible predictions made by Kathy Wood were significant enough to inflict a change in the market trends? Comment below to let us know and make sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at fixturefinances_. underscore. See you next time at Fix Your Finances.